title of paper says Cyberphysical Systems. Uh, during the whole wireless days, I have been listening to almost all of the sessions and I heard about when it's, when it's wireless sensor networks and all of the networks which are dealing with some specified field. But now we are going to talk about um, something more broader. I'm not going to um, be in the detail or in the bottom of some proposed schemes, but we're going to generally talk about something which are basically proposed to convert all of the technologies we currently do have. For example, wireless sensor networks, M2M, IoT, and everything. We're going to convert them all by using CPS systems. Um, and th these are the contents of my presentation, which we're going to do have today. It's like uh, key trends in systems. System here means embedded systems, wireless systems, wired systems, and all the systems which we can put in the categories of communications. And then we, I'm going to explain some possible applications in future about the CPS. That where are we going now? And then I'm going to um, show some of the proposed architecture, a very simple architecture, because as we know that sometimes we do like the complexity of the system, but by the end of the day, we like simple things. Just like an iPhone, Apple, make things sim simple, something like that. Then I'm going to show you some dynamic communications that how a cyber physical system can be applicable to, in terms of dynamic communication, and what exactly the dynamic communication means. And then I'm going to show you the, some of uh, CPS integration. Now, integration means like how this proposed architecture is going to work with different applications, which I'm going to show you in the second uh, content of my presentation. And then at the end, we're going to talk about some open research challenges in this field. It's kind of an informative paper, not exactly like a scheme paper. OK, when we talk about key trends in systems, currently we are focusing, our research are focusing on increasing the functionality of a single system, that how we can take multiple advantages out of the same system, how we can do that. And then, like, for example, if you go to the WAN, so we have VDTNs, we have all the networks to be introduced, and then vehicular networks, and vehicular dog networks, and then mobile dog networks, and all that stuff. Then, what are we looking for is the increasing integration. How to in integrate two systems? Because, of like, uh, a very simple example would be a smartphone, where we can check an email, where we can just go to the social networks, we can make calls, we can send text messages. So what we are doing there, we are trying to integrate all of the services on our hand. That's what it is. And then our growing importance and lens on software. When we talk about some software, how much reliable it is. This is something really important. Why we pay money to a software company? We need some guarantee, we need some reliability on that software. So that's going to be the future for CPS as well. And then increasing number of non-functional constraints. Then, nature of tomorrow systems. We need dynamic systems. A single device should perform multiple tasks at different times. And then, ever-changing, dependable, high confidence. Again, the security comes in. That what is the security, what is the privacy of that system, which I'm going to use for my personal things, for my official things, etc., etc. And then, we, the final thing is, it should be self-aware. Now, this thing comes where CPS is about to start, right? CPS like stands for cyber, cyber physical system. So what we are doing here, integrating cyber world with the physical world, right? So it should be self-aware, self-adapting, like changing the behavior of the same thing. And then, like for example, we have a, different sensors with different things. For temperature, we have a different sensor. For voice recognition, we have a different sensor. How about integrating all functions in one sensor? And how about taking those, all the functions for which we have to buy three sensors, we want to just buy one integrated sensor, right? And then we have self-repairing as well. Like, if there is a malfunction in any network, so it should be capable of self-repairing. All that seems like impossible, how is it possible? Well, in the future, it's going to happen. And then we have sustaining and all. Here comes after this, these two things. When we will be achieving these two things, by the end of the day, we will be having cyber physical systems. What are the expectations in future from these systems? We need them everywhere, used by everyone, even a person which is not relevant to computer field or 
who's not that much educated, he or she could be accompanied with that system. And then for everything, here we, as I told you in the start, that we are going to integrate different functions. So for everything, it should be usable. What are the expectations? The availability should be 24-7. And reliability, 100%, all these connectivities, these things. Classes, we're going to divide, in future, we're going to divide, like we do have the classes right now as well, from young to old, able and disabled, rich and poor, literate and illiterate. So all of these persons, all of these particulars should be uh, benefit, should take some benefit out of that system. That's what we're going to call cyber physical systems. And then we have number, special groups, social networks, culture, like population, anything, we can just go on with that. What are the possible applications in future regarding cyber physical systems? We definitely, we have, currently we have a body agent networks and many other uh, protocols and many other things dealing with our health monitoring systems in our hospitals currently. We're going to improve that. And then health management networks. In transportation, currently we have one X, and we do have some VPN protocols, and we have some monitors as well, the pilot organ networks for that. And then in Unix aviation, we have unmanned um, unmanned aerial vehicles, or something like that. And then we have process control. We do not have process control here means multiple processes going on in single device, and how to control that, how to give priorities to different processes running in the simple and single microprocessor chip. And then, large scale infrastructure, definitely, if we talk about integration of those such kind of big infrastructures like wireless sensor network, like WANIS or something else, definitely we need a very large infrastructure to make cyber physical system possible in the future. And then we have, definitely if we have some big infrastructure, so we have the electric power constraints coming on, we have all, the, all those things that are involved in that. And then, Defense system, they can be used in the defense system as well. And then we have telephysical operations and telemedicine and telemanipulation. Now, telemedicine and telemanipulation, I'm going to explain or give you a little bit of example of that later on. Okay, this, this is the contents of our architecture which we're trying to propose in this paper, simple architecture, CPS, which can be applied in future to propose some, while keeping this architecture in our mind, we can propose some algorithms or we can propose some schemes, right? We have those all, um, first of all, we have sensing module. Here, when I talk about sensing modules, it does not contain a single kind of sensor. It may contain multiple kind of sensors which are dealing with or which are sensing different readings at the same time. And they are forwarding those to the data management module. Now. Sensing module is something physical. We can see sensor, we can touch it, right? But from here, it's going to start in cyber world. That's why we call it like cyber physical integration. In this, we will have this kind of a virtual uh, thing that we have a module dealing with the data management. It consists of computational devices and storage media, right? Maybe cloud or anything else. But computational devices, these are very important because we're going to do the um, computation of data. Like what kind of data am I receiving right now? Is it the heat or like, I mean, is it the temperature right now coming in? Is it the voice? Is it something else? Is it the intruder or something like many things are there. Then we're going to use the concept of next generation internet that's going to be part of CPS in future. And then we have the service aware module, which means that. We have a data right now in our data management module, but what to do with this data? As I told you that CPS is going to be the integration of multiple services. So how to give a proper, appropriate service to the data we have currently in our memory? For example, if we have a fire alarm uh, indicator in the data, so what to do with that? We have a lot of applications going on. We have the intruder alarm. We have the health alarm system in the CPS, we have a fire alarm system. So how to make the system intelligent, service aware module is going to decide that. And then we have application module. For every service, we have multiple applications. For every service, for example, for social network, we have many applications to go on, even a single smartphone. 
So for every service, after selecting or after categorizing the data for a specific service, we're going to categorize further for which application this data is going to be uh, collected or forwarded. Here we can use the concept of NoSQL just for, for the purpose of saving information over the database. Like we are just trying to uh, make such a system which can be capable of uh, saving data as well, plus like feedback awareness. We're going to use the feedback system. Okay, then we talk about the security assurance of that system. How about if, for example, if my grandmother is sitting back in my country, like I came from Korea, and she's just sitting in Korea and she needs some medical assistance. Currently we have a system, monitoring system, but we cannot provide the medical assistance to that person. We can just monitor on our cell phone, maybe I have an application on cell phone, and there are some sensors connected with the body over there, and they're connected to a router or somewhere in the internet, and I'm getting a live monitoring of my grandmother back in my country. But how about treating my grandmother using my cell phone? How is it possible? That's the CPS system is going to make this impossible. We're going to attach activators as well. For example, if she has the disease of uh, diabetes, she needs some insulin at the proper time. And proper amount of insulin is also important. So what I'm gonna do is that if I receive an alert system or any emergency system or message on my cell phone, I'm gonna provide her with an insulin, a proper amount of insulin. So that's gonna be decided by a doctor somewhere else or maybe connected with that one. Without taking her, without going back from Spain to Korea, without calling somebody, without making some panic situation, I'm going to treat her, and not being a doctor. So not a doctor, but I'm going to treat her. That's how the CPS is going to make these things possible. And that, for that reason, the system should be trustworthy. How can I buy such an application? How can I buy such a system? If it's not trustworthy, it's about the life. It's about the services which depend on life. So that's why we need that system to be reliable, secure, privacy preserving, usable, etc. These are some descriptions for the more description of security because when we talk about the integration of multiple uh, interference, then we need some secure system. So that's why I'm going to little bit explain this thing. So the primary aim of all the CPS design should be to ensure that no harm comes to the underlying physical process because we are using cyber world to change physical things. We are not using cyber world just to connect to people just to send an email now. We are changing physical entities by using cyber world. So that should be secure. And then it should be, okay, these are some ensuring security and privacy crucial for safety, like CPS are deployed in efficient physical settings, collect sensitive data and can actuate changes as I told in the physical world, and then composing individual secure systems. For that we need a lot of computation and when it comes to the computation, we need a lot of energy that is, of course, limited. So we need to focus on these things as well. Okay, this is a picture showing some proposed architecture. We have some sensors here, and then actuators here, but it's gonna complete this cycle of communication. At first time, it's gonna, we have some sensors taking some readings out of the physical environment, physical world, and transferring those readings to the data management module. Now what it does, it's gonna forward that thing service where modules plus using the NGI concepts is going to secure the database that what kind of I received at this time with this ID and this sense data I received this and I have forwarded this to there so now it's going to send one copy to here and one copy to the database to secure feedback awareness I'm going to tell you what, what we have the benefit of having, having feedback awareness as well and then it's going to give the data to the application module for the first time. For example, if any kind of sense data arrived here, so it's gonna decide, okay, now go to the application module, and application module should be intelligent enough to judge the data and its reading. And then, actuators. Actuators can be any physical things, like a lamp, like a alarm, like a, a waterfall in case of, like, uh, you can say fire or something, or maybe the alarm is directly connected to the police station in terms of or something, so it's going to work like that. 
But when the same kind of data arrives the next time, if the same data arrives next time, maybe after a week or after an hour again, there is a fire situation or something, then service aware module can or it should be, um, you can say, skip this step and directly it should send the message to actuator. There we can save uh, and there we can control the physical world without any human, uh, you can say, almost 0% or very minimum human influence in these systems. That's what we're trying to do with autonomous systems like this. Okay, this, this is some kind of um, example, or you can say the example scenario of dynamic communication, how it's gonna work like. For example, first time we have a sense data S1, it arrived into the data management module, that's DMM. So it's gonna be assigned to the service aware module using NGI, and there we have a service aware module. When it will arrive here, so it will check. It should check, service aware module will check that, okay, is it in my table previously or not? For first time, it's not gonna be there, so it will be assigned to the application module down here. Now, application module is responsible to assign some application to that data, that what's gonna be happening, what, what is the use of this data? Why I collected this data? And after that, is going to broadcast the message to both the data management modules because if you look into the architecture, it is cyber world. It's not a physical world to move data with the extra efforts or something. We can easily just send the copies to different things. So it's going to give the copy to a service aware module here and to this data management module here as well. They just send to the physical devices or actuators and just perform the task. If it was an emergency situation, if, it, if, it, uh, if it, everything was okay, then no use of that. But we are just talking about some situation where we need actuators to work on. <coughs> so, next time, if the similar data arrives here, so we have now this thing in our history or feedback. So this is a feedback table. So, next time when the same data will arrive here, so at that time, it's gonna be not coming, it's, it will not come to application module. According to the first step, it will go to the service aware module, and service aware module will remind that, okay, when this data arrived at first time, or the, like the application was assigned to that data was A1. So let's not waste the time by sending again to application module. Let's send it directly to the activator. That's how we're gonna save some time for that. We can just assign application quickly as compared to the first time when it arrived. For example, if there's a vehicle car, and it works on like the automatic lights when there's a fog or when there is a, some low light, so it uh, automatically lights are getting turned on. So maybe we can decrease the time because this is also one of the most important part of research area that where we decrease the time of action or reaction, right? So in that case, we can reduce the time for future CPS systems while <coughs> Uh, proposing some algorithms, we can keep this point in our mind. And uh, this is just a, like diagram, it's just like showing that things are getting merged with each other. Okay, now, how that CPS integration is possible by using that simple architecture, so very similar architecture. Uh, we can use, uh, while designing some schemes or by designing some protocols, we have a service aware module which make communication and control efficient because um, efficient in terms of time, in terms of energy of the whole system. We are not going to use application module all the time, just one time only for the same data. So it's gonna be efficient. So we need some efficient routing, keeping that in our mind. And then we have the agriculture scenario, how we can use CPS in agriculture, how we can use. For example, if we have a greenhouse effect or we have a greenhouse situation, so after receiving, maybe there will be some conflagration for every plant. That okay, just water that plant after three hours or three weeks or something like that. So we can have the conflagration from a person or from a gardener or from any company. And after getting that conflagration, then we do not require any influence of human activities. And the feedback awareness like watering, humidity, and for example, if there is a large humidity, then how to control that? We should avoid watering the plants or how to do that. <coughs> then plant health monitoring system, again, it's just like light, we're talking about the light, whether it's a, 
human or is a plant, is alive. So we can monitor that as well with a real-time control. We can control it without visiting that place. We can control that thing. We we just not only get alert, but now we are controlling something with our system. And then we then we have our health scenario for hospitals, as I told you, like the example of my grandmother, for example, so it's going to happen in the hospital very easily. So I'm going to wrap it up. What are the open challenges? This is just this was just a simple architecture or very simplified, you can say the very broader image of CPS. What are the open challenges in this field? Definitely, if we want to integrate those systems, every system, so we need the algorithms or protocols which should be capable of identifying the application, especially in the service aware module and application module. We require some algorithms for that. In order, there should be identification of application requirement of each type of traffic should be possible. We are receiving some science data, how to do that. And then definitely we require efficiency. Efficiency is something really common in every field. Then resource management. We assume that, okay, in the future we will have no such kind of problem in terms of memory storage. But as we are receiving dynamic data, we are receiving multiple sense data with the different properties, with different applications, with different services. So how to manage that? That is we call a resource. Because we are getting some resource, we are getting some input. So how to manage that input? Where to store, how to perform <coughs> actions on that? And that, those should be automatically managed. Then we have the quality of service aware power management. Of course, power is always a constraint, so I, I guess I don't need to have explained this. Simulation tools. We do not have exactly the simulation models for CPS currently in the market. So the researchers or the uh, companies which are dealing with simulations, they are required to make such models which should be capable of dealing with dynamic communication. Currently, we have some literatures for CPS, but they are again dealing with just regular CPS or just a health CPS or something. Not a generalized CPS model is available to simulate your some proposed schemes. What is the future work for our architecture? We are looking forward to implement that architecture. Again, we need some intelligent simulated environment or maybe a test fitting environment, but that's to be honest, it's not going to happen in the coming like two or three years. Maybe after that, we can get some simulations in the market or some models. And then we should uh, propose some unifying, uh, unifying means like, like different data should be unified in one system. Routing schemes, which should be capable of real time, uh, like dealing with the real time sensing and activating the devices. Currently we are, in the end, like currently we are just sensing something and we are just generating alarms. But I'm talking about not generate alarm alone, just generate alarm and fix it. Do not call me, do not tell me that there is a situation, just fix it automatically. I trust you, I paid money for your software. So just do it by yourself. That's on my side. Any questions? I have a very brief question, I, I think it's for my scenario. What do you think will be harder to achieve? Uh, for uh, reliability or security? 